This is WCIA 3 News at 6.30. I couldn't let the taxpayers lie and say that they got their money's worth. And I sure as that couldn't tell my constituents who were in these plans that, you know, they were going to have a doctor <laughs> available to them. As patients complain about affordable access, taxpayers foot billions of dollars a year in payments to a handful of insurance companies. Companies handpicked by a state agency. It all snowballed when Carl terminated a contract with Aetna Medicare. That knocked a number of Christie Clinic doctors out of network as well, leaving patients with little to no options in an area chock full of healthcare facilities. Aetna is one of the companies handpicked by the state to provide healthcare coverage for state retirees. Our Target 3 investigative reporter Renee Cooper is live at the state capitol. And Renee, this year, it could all change. For the first time in a decade and the second time ever, a state agency is in the process of picking health insurance companies to provide the plans that are offered to retired state workers. Now, that's a big investment. The state handed nearly $3 billion over to the Illinois Department of Central Management Services so far this year alone to manage state employee and those retiree plans. Now, since 2018, five companies have been cut checks for more than $13 billion and counting. Two-thirds of that money comes straight from tax the other third is pulled from the paychecks of those state retirees. Now, as the money continues to pour in, as doctor options continue to shrink, healthcare advocates and state lawmakers alike are beginning to wonder what are we actually paying for? And will healthcare access improve for these seniors in the next year? What responsibility does the state have in this? Well, basically, with the state. Come October 1, we have open enrollment. If this isn't remedied or another insurance isn't offered, we only have one choice. University of Illinois retiree Melody McDaniel is right. If the people like her, living in the 47 counties in blue, rule out Aetna because of its diminished doctor network, a more expensive United Healthcare plan is all that's left. In my opinion, that kind of creates monopoly in the state. I put this at the feet of the state. <sighs> The Illinois Department of Central Management Services, or CMS, says it doesn't get involved when contracts are terminated. They should make sure that they contract with qualified insurers who can provide the best coverage possible, and that means coverage that extends to both Carl and Christy. They should be monitoring the whole issue within network doctors, you know, that they're you know, clearly enough available and seems like that's kind of marginal that that really is true. The state claims that's the federal government's responsibility because they write the rules that govern Medicare and Medicaid. Four times a year, Illinois CMS says they get a copy of network adequacy reviews that should show if a plan they're paying for is offering access to at least the minimum number of doctors required by law. But CMS ultimately relies on the feds to tell them if these state plans are not following the law. Aetna works for the state of Illinois, not the federal government, and state CMS ought to be doing their job and help these people. So I'm not real thrilled with central management. Russ Jacobson, who worked for the state for 34 years, is considering dropping his state benefits altogether. He, like every other patient I sat down with, would instead prefer to have an insurance plan with... Health Alliance. Health Alliance. Health Alliance was wonderful. I've seriously started looking at Health Alliance. The Urbana-based company covers access to the three largest local providers. Much easier to talk to. I keep bringing up, you know, Health Alliance because it just works so nicely and seamlessly. State retirees in Champaign and surrounding counties used Health Alliance for decades during their working years, and some into their retirement. That is, up until eight years ago, when the state decided to create a new separate plan for retirees. The Medicare Advantage Prescription Drug Program, or MAPT, was launched January 1, 2014. So that's where this whole thing started. At the time, Senator Chapin Rose was a member of the Illinois General Assembly's Commission on Government Forecasting and Accountability, or COGFA. The 12 members advise lawmakers on how to spend your taxpayer dollars. They're also responsible for monitoring the insurance program for state employees. It was bad, right? It was the Great Recession. In early 2013, the state employees union, known as AFSCME, was sparring with the state for pay raises. After about 15 months of negotiations, a contract was signed by then Governor Pat Quinn's office, including increased wages. And they paid for it by bringing in Medicare Advantage Trail to save on health care costs. And by the summer of 2013, CMS started considering proposals from insurance companies 
ultimately choosing three that split coverage between the counties. CMS ranked Aetna as the top scoring insurer and Health Alliance was denied a contract. Well, that's interesting because the vendors that they picked didn't actually have uh, providers in downstate counties that they were given the contract to. But Health Alliance did. So exactly what criteria were they talking about? Democratic State Treasurer Mike Frerichs, who was a CONFA co-chair back then, says Health Alliance did not meet some requirements, but agreed the score sheet was arbitrary. He says Health Alliance also expected a chance to negotiate further, which was common practice at the time, and that didn't happen. Health Alliance was ultimately contracted a year later to fill in gaps in coverage, but the company was left out of central Illinois, including its hometown of Champaign County. And there was a lot of outcry in the community at the time because people were afraid of exactly a situation like this. But it, it seemed like a, a fairly bizarre situation. There was no clarity on why the Health Alliance bid was denied or rejected. That was the second blow to the company in two years. When Health Alliance lost its state employee contract in 2011, they sued. And in 2012, the Illinois Auditor General found the Department of Healthcare and Family Services was not upfront about scoring criteria. And state officials gave one consulting firm a major voice in the process, even though that firm was in business with every insurance company proposed to the state. You, know, you follow the lineage down to today, and I just don't see that much has changed with CMS. Right now, we're just experiencing the worst of all worlds. It's, you know, some big national insurer who um, just doesn't have the network capability. And in my mind, they should not have been given, their bid should not have been approved, at least not for this area. It's unclear whether Aetna will still be an option come open enrollment in October. I did confirm this morning the state is still in the bidding process to pick health insurance plans for state retirees and couldn't they couldn't answer questions about the process or who's being considered right now. CMS says the goal is to have those contracts finalized for open enrollment in October. Now, Senator Rose tells me after all of that uproar 10 years ago, state lawmakers now have to sign off on these contracts, but ultimately the executive branch is still in charge of the process. Now, Health Alliance also wouldn't comment on whether they are going to be a part of the process this time around. And I also sent in a Freedom of Information Act request to the U.S. Department for, uh, of Center for Medicare and Medicaid to see what the latest reviews of Aetna's doctor directories look like. Now, there's much more of this story online, including additional details from that Auditor General's report. For now, live from the Capitol, Renee Cooper, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Renee, thank you. Now, issues with Medicare Advantage plans, formerly known as Medicare Part C, go far beyond one company and far beyond Illinois. The government, state and federal, pays insurance companies a fixed monthly rate to provide these plans. But the companies only pay out when a patient goes to the doctor. So there's potential incentive for them to deny patients access to services or refuse to pay claims in order to increase profits. The U.S. Office of the Inspector General released a report this year that shows these companies issue millions of denials each year in relation to Medicare Advantage plans. Out of a random sample, the report found nearly one in five claims that should have been paid were denied. It all comes down to a pattern of health insurance companies reaping billions off of patients in need when they play hardball in negotiations with health care companies that are continue, continuing to consolidate across the country. The disputes are devastating for patients. Meanwhile, the state government elected to protect its citizenry, citizenry says its hands are tied. Some change could be coming in tighter federal regulations meant to protect patients from losing affordable access to health care. We'll have more of that online as well.